Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It has been another busy period in the world of electricity, with load shedding resuming, the Energy Minister speaking and Eskom and NERSA resuming hostilities. Terence Screamer joins me to unpack developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Eskom kicked things off last week, giving some insight into the load shedding risk. Yes, they gave their state of the system update. We know that we've had a lot of load shedding since December. 2019 was South Africa's worst ever load shedding year in its history. We even had stage six load shedding in December. And uh, basically the view now is that unless the coal fleet is maintained as per the service schedules that are provided for such equipment, we're going to continue to have this uh, deterioration in the performance. We now have a coal fleet that's operating well below the 70% energy availability factor. Unplanned breakdowns are between 10,000 and 15,000 megawatts regularly. And therefore, the new CEO and the COO, Andre de Reiter, has given us the outline of a new approach to maintenance. And that's going to mean that load shedding is going to be with us on a more regular basis. And uh, probably for at least the next 18 months, we're going to be seeing load shedding as part of almost our daily routine so that they can do the maintenance as per uh, guided by the original equipment manufacturers. The utility is also chasing additional revenue of 27 billion rand. Yes, there's a number of balls in the air. You've got the operational instability, which has to be fixed, which is a real systemic risk to Eskom and its uh, survival as an entity. And then you've got the financial risk that overhangs Eskom. One of those risks uh, relates to the tariff and Eskom's view that they're still not getting a cost-reflective tariff. Society is obviously pushing back because they're saying cost-reflective, what are your costs? And you need to lower those. And I think there is a view that uh, there's going to be a focus within Eskom to reduce costs. But, uh, but over and above that, we have uh, a mechanism in place where Eskom, through the formula by which they get their revenue, um, has a, an ability to claw back uh, revenue where there's a variance between what they've actually spent and what was modelled when the tariff was approved. And uh, again, as we've seen in previous uh, regulatory clearing account applications, Eskim's not really looking to give back to the consumer. They, they're saying that they've under-recovered uh, on primary energy and other expenditure as well. And then they've also had less sales than was assumed. Uh, in when the tariff was determined. So they're looking to recover 27 billion rand. Now this is in, in addition to what's happening at the courts. So we're having the court cases at the moment where Eskom has an urgent application in the way NERSA treated the 69 billion bailout by government. And that we should hear quite soon uh, what Judge Jody Collipin view, how the how judge views that. And if the judge sides with Eskom, we could see tariffs increase from April 1 instead of 8% sanctioned by about 16%. Um, just to, in terms of how that deals with the, um, the 69 billion. Then we have these, the regulatory clearing account for another 27 billion. Now it's totally within uh, the gift of NERSA as to how that's liquidated. So it might not be liquidated from April 1, but if NERSA agrees that Eskom should get something, and they usually agree that Eskom should get something, not everything, then that could also come in from April 1. And then we've got the other court cases, the review of, uh, of the 2019 uh, tariff, which is the one that the RCA also deals with. We've got the review of the MIPD tariffs uh, that came in uh, under MIPD 3. And we've got uh, a review of the nurses RCA treatment. So there's a lot of uh, legal water to flow under the bridge. And I don't think we'll have resolution of that before April 1, so that won't affect the tariff. But it's, there's a lot of, uh, suddenly, a lot more uncertainty about where tariffs are going and, and heading, because although we have a three-year determination, there are these other moving parts. So we're back to the future in terms of public hearings, and they will continue until the end of February, and then uh, NERSA will have to make a determination. Minister Guido Montage has also weighed in on how to address the power deficit. Yes, I think uh, there's been frustration at the lack of responsiveness from the minister. And uh, he used the platform of the mining in Darba to announce his vision for uh, tackling uh, the crisis. 
we know there's a, this request for information out from the from his department for emergency power solutions. There's frustration around that, given that it took months for the RFI to be released after the integrated resource plan was published. But be that as it may, that that deadline closed at the end of January, and there were queues outside the, uh, the RPP office doors, um, uh, very long queues, basically offering solutions. Government is now going to go through a process of evaluating that, um, and then they will have procurement programs that will flow probably sometime in February. Then uh, this issue of self-generation, uh, the, the minister made an important announcement that there would be a uh, change to Schedule 2 of the Electricity Regulation Act. This has really become a binding constraint on especially larger self-generation projects. So once that Schedule 2 is published and has the concurrence of NERSA, hopefully we'll see investment in self-generation, which should provide some immediate relief to ESKIM and, and maybe lower the load shedding risk. This is really months rather than years away if the private sector does uh, invest in the projects, about 2,000 megawatts of near-term proj projects. That's useful. But unfortunately, the, the waters were also muddied uh, during the press engagement with uh, the minister talking about a backup plan with a, another state-owned generation utility outside of Eskom. You can imagine uh, state-owned companies as a whole uh, are all in distress. Now we're looking to capitalize another state-owned company uh, to back up Eskom uh, was the view. You know, when there's private sector money available, expertise, skills, energy ready to act, this provides another level of uncertainty. Do you have to create a, a free carry for this new entity, for instance? Will the, where will this entity be housed? Will it be in the Central Energy Fund or somewhere else? Um, there's a lot of uncertainty that that creates. So I suppose many will just focus on the Schedule 2 and the relief that that could could give and that is a positive development but again you know as soon as we take a step forward we seem to then take a step back and it does cause uh, creates a lot of uncertainty which is unhelpful thank you that's the second tech show for this week thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis also don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter